In this lesson, we are going to be talking about light and color. So light comes from a source. So in the old days, they used to think that our eyes actually sent out the light beam. The light beam hit something and came back to our eyes, and that's how we saw. But nowadays, we know that things that produces light are called luminous bodies, like the sun. The sun is a producer of light. The moon, on the other hand, is not a producer of light. The moon is a reflector of light. So the sun puts out the light. The light comes down here to earth, and that's how we see. Light bulbs, those are luminous sources. They produce light. Um, light bulbs, there's different types of light bulbs right now. We have LED bulbs and CFL bulbs, or CFL stands for uh, com compact fluorescent lamp. Um, an incandescent light bulb is one that glows from heat. So an incandescent, that means that the light source is produced from heat. Uh, you can see the different colors that are being put off by the different materials on the left. So we have five different uh, elements and we're burning them. They each produce a different color light sort. That's because the different light, the colors are based on the frequency. We learned last chapter about the electromagnetic spectrum and the spectrum of visible light was from 400 to 700 nanometers. Those were the wavelengths. And based on what frequency we see, we are going to have a different material. So our eye can detect the different frequencies. And that's how we characterize stars. We can look at the stars and we can see what color the star is and determine what gas the star is made out of. So incandescent is something where the light is caused by a flame or a high temperature. We know that our eyes receive light. They're the receiver of light. The light goes into our eye, it hits the back of our eyeball, and our brain processes the image. The rays are how light travels. And remember, a ray is like an arrow, so it's in a straight line. So when we're dealing with um, lenses and optics, we deal with rays, light, we call them light rays, and we trace those rays. Here we can see a normal eye, right? The eyeball, when it processes the image um, for a normal sighted eye, you can see that the R is formed on the back of the eye upside down. Long sighted, uh, the focal length is behind where it should be, so we have to add a certain lens to change the focus to the back of the eye. And this is what a eye doctor does. He finds that convex lens for your long sightedness that causes all those light rays to come together on the back of the eye so your brain can process a clear image. On the other side, if we look at short sighted, short sighted eye, what happens is that the images come together before they get to the back of the eye. So for a short eye, you can see the focal point is before the back of the eyeball. So in this case, we're going to use a concave lens, and the concave lens is going to show us, or it's going to, excuse me, move the focal point back so that the R is clear again and your brain can process the image. So when you go to the eye doctor, he puts a bunch of concave and convex lenses up in front of your eye, and you tell him which has the best looking image or the clearest image. White light contains all of the colors of the spectrum. We mentioned this already. White light, um, like from the sun, what happens is all of the colors are focused together inside that white light. When our eye sees all the colors at once, it sees white. Here we have a prism, and what happens when the white light hits the prism, all the different colors have a different frequency and wavelength, so they're all going to refract at a different angle. <clears throat> Purple is going to have the shortest wavelength and refract the most. Red is going to have the longest wavelength and refract the least. And then when they come out on the other side of the prism, they do another refraction because of the angle of the prism, and that separates them into the different colors of the spectrum, and we can see the rainbow. This is known as dispersion. If you put a second prism upside down and you collect the rainbow, it will re fract back into its original white light. Newton was the first person to do all of these famous experiments in 1666. Um, he wrote a book called Optics that he published and it was groundbreaking. It was his first major piece of physics. How we see color is uh, two ways we see color. Remember color, all the colors are combined in white light. So the first way we see color is by reflection. So if we just go through these slides and 
Uh, we'll start on the right, on the top, and the white ray of light enters. So white sunlight is shining down on the red surface. What happens is all of the colors get absorbed by the surface except for the red light that gets reflected. So when you're seeing red, what actually is happening is all of the colors are being absorbed except red. Red is being reflected back to your eye. And there you can see the green grass, a red apple, and you can see all the different colors. RGB, that's red, green, blue. CMY, that's cyan, magenta, and yellow. So red, green, and blue are known as the primary colors. Cyan, magenta, and yellow are known as the secondary colors. So this is color by reflection. Light hits a surface, it bounces off of that surface, and that's the color you see. So in the summertime, you want to wear a white shirt because the sunlight's going to come down, it's going to hit the white shirt, and all of the light is going to reflect off the white shirt. That's Remember, when you see white, you're seeing all of the color. On the opposite, black, black shirts are going to absorb all of the light. Black is the absence of color. So when everything is being absorbed, what you're actually seeing is a void of color. You're seeing nothing. That's what black is. So white is all of the colors. Black is none of the colors. Black is not a color. And you can see that in the pictures here. Right, A white surface, they all reflect. A red surface, one reflects. A black surface absorbs everything. So a black hole is called a black hole because it will not let light leave it. Once light from outside hits that black hole, it gets sucked into it due to the gravity and the strength. So when you're looking across the sky and you see something super black, a black of the blackest black spots, um, that's how they discovered a black hole. The second way we see color is by transmission, and this is by using filters. So if you ever had like rose-colored sunglasses or yellow-colored sunglasses, that is what we're talking about here, the filters on them. So a red filter absorbs every color except red light, a blue filter absorbs every color but blue light, and a green filter absorbs every color but green light. So if you took a green, a red filter, and put it in front of white light and let the red come through, and then you put a green filter up in front of that red light, you would see black because that green would absorb the red and you would see no colors. Likewise, if you did a red on the blue light or a red on the green light, the second lens is going to absorb that light because remember, it's only allowing light through it that is the color of the lens. The other colors are all being absorbed. Primary colors I mentioned are red, green, and blue. When red and blue combine, they form magenta. When green and blue combine, they form the color cyan. And when green and red light form combine, they form yellow. Yellow, those are the secondary colors, or the primary pigments. And then with color subtraction, you can see cyan and yellow make green. Magenta minus yellow makes red. And the last one, cyan minus magenta, makes blue. So when we combine or subtract these colors, we can make new colors. Now remember, these are lights. This is not pigment. When we talk about the pigments, magenta, cyan, and yellow, those are the three colors on your printer. You combine those pigments to form every color. When you're dealing with light, you're taking red, green, and blue light to be able to form every color. On your television set, you only have three adjustments you can make, red, green, and blue. Those three things allow you to see every color. So there's a difference between pigments and colors. If you were to look at a magazine page under a magnifying glass, you would see little dots of magenta, cyan, and yellow. If you were to look at the pixels on your television, you would see little dots of red, green, and blue. And here's just another picture of the color mixing with some lights. You can see when they get together, the red and the blue, they form magenta. Red and the green, they form yellow. Uh, green and the blue, they form cyan. And then when all three of them are equal in the middle, you get white. Because red, green, and blue are all the colors of the spectrum, or the primary colors. And when you combine all the colors, or the three primary colors, you always get white. The last thing we want to talk about in this lesson are is polarized light. And polarized light is pretty popular these days. If you go to the 3D movies and you get polarized, those glasses you get to see the movie in 3D, those are polarized glasses. Likewise, your sunglasses many times are polarized glasses, um, Polaroid film. 
But what happens in a polarized lens is a polarized lens is a filter. It's kind of like a storm grate. So just like a stick would get stuck in the storm grate if it's going perpendicular to the grate lines. Same thing happens with light. Light is actually perpendicular electric and magnetic fields that travel perpendicular to each other. So when it hits the grate, only the field that is in line or parallel to the grate will pass through. So it filters the light down. And then if you take a second grate or a second polarized lens and make it at 90 degrees or perpendicular to the first, that will block the rest of the light from coming through. And this is how polarized lens work. So with your sunglasses that are polarized, what they're going to do is they're going to block light waves that are perpendicular to the highway. They're only going to allow the parallel one, or excuse me, they're going to block the parallel waves. They're only going to allow the perpendicular through. And this takes away glare. That's why um, sunglasses, uh, NASCAR drivers in their glasses or their goggles would be polarized when you're on the snow skiing. Your lenses are polarized. Fishermen are polarized because it's going to block the light that's parallel, the light that causes the glare so that you can see better. You don't get that in your eyes. To show you this idea of this 90 degrees, here are three different things, right? A polarized lens with your phone. If you ever looked at your phone through polarized sunglasses, you notice that it looks really weird because that image that the phone is producing or is a polarized image. And you can see when you hold two polarized lenses perpendicular to each other, it forms 100% blackout. And when you hold them parallel, it goes right through. And when you hold them at about a 45, it just dims it a little bit. So polarized lenses are pretty cool. Um, it's interesting. If you have a pair, try them around, try them with your phone, and see how they work.